Hey, welcome to UV Chef and hope you're well. Um, this week we're going to take you through, as usual, all the dishes. Uh, so we've got nine dishes which are made up of three starters, three mains, two desserts and a cheese. That's the same every week. Uh, also we've got our weekly bake course. Sometimes that's like this week we're doing a brioche. Um, so we've got like this lovely shallot, caramel shallot brioche with uh, fresh thyme going through it. Other weeks it might be a cracker, we've got taramel salata, so it changes all the time. Uh, so we'll take you through all of those. Um, this is how it comes if you've not had a box before. So it comes in this lovely, lovely and strong box. Uh, inside you've got this uh, wall call lining, so that keeps it all perfectly cold. Uh, this is all completely sus uh, sustainable, sorry. Um, loads of things you can use uh, this after for. Uh, even this week, one of our fabulous guests, uh, I see that they've, they've wrapped their lovely flower pots, like uh, big planters up in it to protect it from the frost. So great way of uh, uh, reusing it. Um, so we really pay a lot of attention to the packaging. And where possible, it's, uh, it's, it's sustainable, uh, but at the very least, it's all recyclable. Um, so that's the box. Uh, remember it comes with the instructions, um, easy to follow and this video so you can kind of watch the video for some extra little tips on how we, how we plate it all up. Feedback is absolute key to us, we love feedback. If you've got any questions, anything, just contact us via Facebook, Instagram or, or via email. We'd love to hear from you and also to hear what you thought of the boxes as well. So uh, time to get cooking now. Uh, I'll take you through what's in this week's box um, and hopefully if you've got one of these, uh, you'll have a great time cooking it up. So first things first, um, if you've ordered the weekly bait this week, um, undo um, pack it with your brioche in and what you'll have inside it's two lovely brioches like this. Um, we've rolled them with a caramelised shallot, uh, going sort of all over the layers of the brioche. Some nice pick time on there. They're going to go in the oven about six minutes. Okay, so let's get them in now. Here we go. And then take your butter out and make sure that softens up room temperature 15, 20 minutes. And then what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to put it into my little pot here, put it in there, a little bit of salt on the top. And then once our brioche is baked, we'll plate it up. So six minutes, one three hours just coming out. Here we go. Now, if you like to get a nice little shine on the top, um, you can brush with a little melted butter, or I just like a little bit of olive oil or rapeseed oil, like so, on the top. Tiny bit of extra molten salt. Molten salt's nice and flaky. So as you eat it, you just get a little burst of salt going through. And then I've got my butter all softened. And then look at that, lovely couple of nice, hot brioches, just to take to the table, tear apart and dunk into that salted butter. Enjoy. So moving on to starters now. Um, first one is an escabeche of mackerel. So what you've got here, lovely fillet of uh, day boat mackerel. It's been scored, uh, it's been blowtorched, um, and then we've sat it into like a liquor, uh, which we've made um, using saffron. Uh, it's got sherry vinegar in there, shallots, carrots, um, and then we're finishing this in this pan with some peppers as well. So this is all my escabeche vegetables, um, and then you'll see a little bit of the escabeche liquor just in with the mackerel. So it's got that lovely vinegariness to it, which you sit the fish in, and it almost just finishes off cooking the fish. So it's just left, sort of left slightly raw, but absolutely safe to eat. So this is going to go under the grill uh, for about two, two minutes, two to three minutes. Um, or you can go in the oven for about four minutes. Um, either or if you don't have a grill, it's no problem. And then all I've got here, as I explained, is these uh, nice little vegetables. You've got shallot rings in there, red, yellow pepper, carrot, and some saffron. So that's just gonna go on the heat. I don't wanna boil that. I just wanna kind of bring it up to temperature just so it's not fridge cold. Um, and then what we're gonna serve with, um, we've got these pumpernickel croots, little pumpernickel bread. Um, we've got a dill creme fraiche uh, and we've got some picked dill as well. So I've got my plate already here, uh, no need to heat the plate up um, just because everything is just going to be nice and warm. So just turn that over around, like so, and that's almost it, it's almost there. Keep an eye on your mackerel, you just hear the skin starting to crisp up again. There we go. That smell of the mackerel, that char is just absolutely beautiful, love it. Uh, then we're going to dress some of our vegetables on the plate, like so. Try and 
try and play with the colours so you've got that sort of peppers showing around it. Carrots. There we go. I'm going to leave a little bit for the top. And then let's take a little spoon of our creme fraiche. This is a dill creme fraiche. And I'm just going to put a nice spoon of that just on the side. Like right where we've got the kind of the oily fish, something nice and refreshing with the lemon juice going through there. Let's yeah, see on that quote. Should be about done there. Just give the top a little feel of it. So just feeling the top, it's got that nice crispness back to it. Tiny bit of extra seasoning I like to add. There we go. And then let's lift out that mackerel fillet. So it sits just on the top of there. There we go. And I'm just going to get my nice pumpernickel bread. You can put it in a little fork resting on the side. I just want to add it just at the top. I'm going to take some of my little freshly picked dill and just add a little bit of that around. This is just for the colour. Go. Nice bit of dill, and then not forgetting that best professional liquor. So, get some of those shallots on the top, which look really lovely on, against that dark mackerel skin. And then let that liquor there we go. You've got beautiful colors on there, even though it's winter, when a lot of things are this time of year are beige and orange. You've got this lovely vibrant starter full on flavour. There you go, Escobesha mackerel, pumpernickel bread and a dill creme fraiche. Up next I've got a chicken liver parfait for you. Um, so really really easy with this one. Make sure you take it out about 15 minutes before you're going to serve it. That allows it to come up to room temperature. Take off the lid or recyclable and then what you'll find inside you've got the chicken liver parfait which has then had this lovely pork jelly set on the top. You smell it, you can smell the livers, of course, that chicken liver pathway coming through, and that lovely, like, port, uh, like that alcoholy kind of um, little kick on the top. So, that's basically all ready to go. Get your sourdough, so this is some lovely uh, sourdough which we've made. Get that in there. just a few minutes to warm up in there, and then garnishes, what we've sent to you to go with this. So, this is nice and rich, so we want the garnishes to cut through all that richness, give it a little bit of texture. So we've got a dressing, pork dressing, just to go over the top of everything. And then we've got some pickled pear just here. So I'm going to take some of these pieces of pear. And I'm just going to add a few nice pieces going round, like so. This is again when you're going to go through to that pathway underneath. You're going to get a little bit of crunch from that pear really nice little textures so I'll put a few of those pieces on there and then I'm going to take a little bit of my pork dressing not too much this is just to dress the top of it so when you go through again you've got a nice little dressing sort of to go with the with the parfait and then let's get uh, some of these little uh, herbs and shoots so we've got a nice little selection, we've got cabbage shoots in here, broccoli shoots, um, so little um, little charred leaves. So I'm just going to arrange some of these a little bit chefy, just to kind of add some extra. This one's lovely, this is like a red sort of perilla dress, so a little bit of that on there. So let's make sure you kind of arrange it nicely so it's almost like sort of like a bunch of flowers then when you look at it looking really really pretty so almost there and you can sort of stand them up a little bit as they go in I'm just going to want some of those and there we go so that's all ready to go tiny little bit of mould and so little flakes on the top onto my serving plate let's grab out my sourdough just 
just put that on the board. And then you can even just add that on the side as you go. I'm just gonna slice my through. And there we go. Lovely little bit of char sourdough just to dip away into that chicken liver parfait. My vegetarian starter, and uh, this week's Uber Chef menu um, is this crispy poached egg. So, this is how it comes to you. Um, lovely duck egg in panko breadcrumbs. Be careful, it's nice and delicate. Um, so, that wants to go on a baking tray. And then, also, you've got these lovely sauteed potatoes. These are going to go in the oven about six to eight minutes to start with. And then, your crispy poached egg is going to go in the oven for about four minutes, so not too long in there. If you want it well done, of course. Uh, extra three four minutes on that so I'm going to give that a couple then my scotch eggs going to go in and then when we come back I've got this little winter salad which we've got some frisee radicchio a bit of spinach going through there um, we've got little shallot rings as well and we've got a lovely pomery mess uh, sorry pomery mustard dressing um, just to go over our winter salad um, and then we're going to mix that up and then we're going to dress the plate with the sauteed potatoes on the bottom um, add our egg uh, and then the shallot rings on the top so back in about five minutes to finish this one off. Uh, my crispy egg is nearly ready in the oven now um, and my sauteed potatoes so let's put the salad and eggs together. Um, so first of all uh, let's get our winter salad leaves in the bowl. Tiny bit of seasoning, again optional but I like a little bit of seasoning on that. And then take some of your pomery mustard um, dressing and then just uh, give that a really good work around. All the salad leaves should be nicely dressed, but not swimming in uh, in vinaigrette, of course. So let's get our potatoes out. There we go. Just the egg. Be careful that tray is hot. Tiny bit on the top, and then what we'll do is arrange our sautéed potatoes. So we've given these a little bit of a colour. So we've like brought them up in some lovely uh, little veg stock first of all. Then we've sliced them, coloured them off. You don't need to do any of that, it's all done. So I'm just gonna nicely sort of like arrange them, fanning out a little bit. And that'll provide a base to sit the salad and then the egg on, like so. And then what we'll do, again as I said, get your salad leaves and just build a nice little pile. In the centre you've got this lovely frisé. This frisé, obviously, when you eat this, often you eat the, the green around the outside, which is bitter and horrible. Um, what we do, we pick it down so you've just got the lovely yellow in the centre. So that's the bit really you should eat. So, that's nice, like, a pile of salad in the centre. And let's go, our egg. Sit him on top. Let's have a little clear down those out of the way and then dressing more of that mirror mustard dressing so tiny bit over and then around this is a really beautiful salad often the Lyonnaise it's got kind of like a little onion sort of like sauteed onions going through the potatoes but what we've done for you here just to go refine it a little bit you've got some of these beautiful crispy shallot rings so I'm just going to put some of those on the top and then why not, let's put a few just around that salad. These give a lovely little crunch. Again, texture all the time, texture, flavour, colour. So, there we go, beautiful. So there you have my salad leonese with a crispy poached egg, pomery mustard dressing. Here I've got a lovely piece of wild sea bass. Uh, so really nice thick fillet. You've got that beautiful white flesh in there. What we've done, uh, we've coloured the skin off you, just grilled it so you've got a really nice skin. So all you need to do for this, in the oven, about six to eight minutes. So in that goes. And then what we're serving you with, a little chickpea stew. So this is made with some lovely Isle of Wight tomatoes, uh, all cooked down. Uh, we've got some peppers in there as well. And then that sauce we've blended up. Put it back in the pan, we have some uh, cooking chorizo in there, so that's all in. And then that's going to be finished with some chopped chives, so get that on the heat. 
and then that will slowly warm up. Don't want to boil it too quickly. Um, and then when we've got about two minutes left on the cooking time of the sea bass, we've got these Manchego little cheese straws. Um, so we've layered them up with some smoked pimento, uh, the Manchego puff pastry. They're going to go in there for about two minutes. And then we've just got these lovely little semi-dried sort of tomatoes, um, again, Isle of White tomatoes, where we dry them, intensifies the flavour even more. Uh, they're going to go in the oven for two minutes as well. So we'll wait for them. When it comes to serving, we've got little chorizo crisps and we've got a little saffron aioli in there as well. So we've got garlic in there, saffron, oil, which like, like a mayonnaise. Um, so all ready and all, uh, we'll be back in about five minutes to plate this one up. So welcome back. Um, we've uh, got a plate going under the grill just now to warm up. My chickpea stew is all heated up. Lovely smell coming off of there with that chorizo. Now let's get it our First of all, I'll pass out the oven, then we pick some sea bass, and then get hot on there. I like tomatoes, cheese straws. So let's plate. Bowl. Now this is a real nice, rusticy looking one. You know, to plate up, lovely and warming flavours at this time of year. Absolutely sheeting it down outside at the moment, so I'm quite pleased to be in the, in the warmth of the kitchen. So let's plate the chickpea stew first of all. I want a nice bit on there as well. Nice, uh, don't be shy with, uh, with the amount. So there we go, chickpeas. And then next, let's take the uh, sea bass. So there you go, lovely little piece of sea bass on there. Then I'm going to take some of those tomatoes. I'm just going to place them around. Can't wait to have all those lovely colours back. We should be back in kind of like sort of March, April time when we get all the lovely heritage variety. But for now, it's like the mini plum um, other varieties, which are still absolutely beautiful. I never used to use tomatoes at all out of season, as it were, until I came to the Isle of Wight. But these ones are absolutely fantastic. So there you go, tomatoes all plated. Then. What I'm going to do is get my little um, cheese straws. I'm just going to put a couple just sort of resting on that chickpea. These are almost just to sort of dip in. There we go. Let's balance them. Um, behave. Yep. Um, and then take some of your little chorizo crisps. A few of those. Just plated in between. Lovely little bit of crunch. And then lastly, get some of our saffron aioli and I'm going to put just a little bit just in the corner and this is again you see you can sort of like stir it into those lovely chickpeas as you eat them so touch of aioli just at the bottom like so and we're ready to go a nice and simple beautiful piece of sea bass chickpea stew Isle of white tomatoes and a little uh, manchego cheese straws Our meat main course this week um, is like a staple. We've had it on the restaurant um, since the beginning, really. Um, it's a rump of lamb, uh, which is barbecued first of all on the green egg, and uh, then we sous vide and cook it for about an hour and a half, nice and slowly, still keeping it nice and pink. And then it comes to you, just ready to heat back through the oven. So about 12 minutes on there. You want it a little bit more cooked, about 12 to 14 minutes. Um, and then with that. Again, something that we've been doing since the start. This lovely pressing of lamb shoulder, again barbecued, and then picked down nice and small, layered with potato, and then we cook that uh, again on sous vide. Uh, and then we press it, we cut it, we wrap it in this foil brick like phyllo pastry, and you get this lovely slice. It's almost like a hot pot. Uh, that's gonna take about 10 minutes in the oven. And then butter spinach, nice simple garnish. Um, so you've got large leaf spinach. Uh, that's going to be about six minutes in the oven as well, six to eight minutes, with the beetroots as well. Heritage beetroots, we've got some candy here, we've got some golden, same as the spinach, six to eight. And then garnishes, lamb sauce, salsa verde. Salsa verde because the lamb, especially rump of lamb, is a bit fatty. Um, it, won't, it won't be like, uh, not nice to eat, what I mean is, but it's got that real fattiness in the meat. Um, so you want something to cut through it, i.e. the vinegar and salsa verde. Um, so 
We'll be back uh, shortly to plate all this together and put, uh, put together one of my favourite main courses. So I've taken my lamb rump out already. Um, important to rest that three or four minutes. Um, and then that way when you cut it, all of the blood sort of stays with the meat instead of coming out over the board. So you want to rest that, the meat kind of like relaxes and it's like when you eat it, lovely and tender. So get your plate, come to the grill, lamb sauce, and the salsa verde is just room temperature on that. So let's bring out our hot pots. And of course, spinach and beetroots. So, plates are ready. So what we'll do is let's take our lamb, put that on the on the board, and with the lamb, um, it's got a grain to it. So you'll see the grain of the meat goes one way. Now, when you cut it, you want to slice the other way. So you're not slicing with the grain; you're slicing across it. So you should see all like the ends of the protein sort of in there and that will make it much more um, tender when you eat it. So make sure you spend a little bit of time, look at what way it's going, and then we're gonna slice the other way. So let's take our uh, hot pot, we carefully to lift that up, I'm just gonna rearrange it, make sure I get a nice side of it on my, my plate. So there we go. And that smell from that is just lovely. It's um, really that rich, rich barbecued uh, lamb shoulder. Um, Aroma coming off of there. So let's get the spinach with a nice little pile of that. This is to sit the lamb on. So there we go. And then a little tied down. Let's take some of our beetroots, a little bit of seasoning. We'll plate some of those around again. Play with the colours as you're plating it, like so. There we go, beautiful. And then by that stage, lamb's all nice and rested. I'm just going to turn it over. I'm going to put the fat side just down. And I'm going to slice it about sort of centimetre slices. You see as you slice it, all that juice just stays in that lamb gleaming away. So, nice and careful, nice sharp knife you want for that. And then let's turn it over. I'm going to put the end piece just underneath, like that, two end pieces. And we're going to just fan those top three, sit that on the top. Tiniest bit of moulding again. And let's sit that on. Honestly, it's one of my favourite ways of cooking um, this, and also the cut as well. So there we go, all sat on there, lovely. And then just to serve up, take our lamb sauce first of all. Tiniest bit just over the lamb, you don't want to kind of douse the lamb in it. Um, I'm just going to take this a little bit over the top of my pressing just to make it lovely and shiny. And a little bit more around. And lastly, let's take some of our salsa So say lastly, because you don't want it to be heated up on the plate by the time it gets there. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of that just at the top of the plate like that. There we go. Cracking dish, uh, barbecued rump of lamb, pressing of uh, confit shoulder, salsa verde, beetroots and uh, a lovely wilted spinach. Last main course um, is one we've done before actually. Um, it's always good to bring dishes back which um, which go down really well. Um, so this is the uh, lasagna of lovage. So we make a lovage pasta. It's got like a celery taste to it, but but more powerful. Um, so lovage pasta, lovage bechamel going through there, um, and then we've got uh, Jerusalem artichokes, uh, some wild mushrooms, lovely little sourdough crumb on the top. 25, 30 minutes in the oven. Okay, so in that goes. Um, Serving it with some just some garnishes are going to go really nicely with it. Lovely bit of braised celery heart. Uh, so we've taken just the centre of the celery, uh, cook that down in some celery juice. Uh, that's going to go in the oven about six to eight minutes. Um, and then this apple and lovage vinaigrette, granny with apple, lovage oil, 
little celery leaves, sort of celery leaves from the um, celery heart. We've deep fried them, a little bit of celery crust as well. So we'll be back, it's gonna take a little while to make this lasagna. Uh, so we'll be back in about half an hour or so and I'll show you how to put this one together. I'm just gonna get my plate heated up for my lasagna. Let's get that out of the oven. There's the celery first of all, only been six or eight minutes for that one. Then there is the lasagna. So a little flash more on that plate. So with the lasagna, you can let it sit there just for a few minutes. That'll make it a little bit easier to lift out. But the best way is just to take a little spatula and just carefully like loosen it just down the side, like so. And get our plate out. So spatula right under. There we go. Instantly that smell of that love is just hits you. It's absolutely gorgeous. Really unusual uh, kind of uh, herb, like nothing else. Then let's take our celery. A lovely piece of braised celery just on the side. I'm going to put a bit of vinaigrette. So I'm going to dress some of that celery in that, and then I'm going to put some of those nice little cubes of Granny Smith apple, that great acidity. Outside, and then let's get some celery leaves. These just had a lovely little crisp, and it's such a shame to, to not use these. So we buy lovely heads of leafy celery, and that's what just gets fried. So, there we go, a few more of those, and then a little bit of celery press just to freshen it up even more and we are all ready to serve. So really vibrant green plate there. Um, lovely lasagna with that lovish flavor. Okay, so dessert is calling you now. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to put these together. They don't take too long at all. First one is the lemon posset. First thing, get your vanilla beignets in the oven. Um, we're not gonna take long to heat up at all. Four or five minutes, plenty. Um, so what you'll find with sent uh, you with and um, you've got your sugar uh, which is uh, just got uh, blueberries going through there and vanilla um, so that's to roll your beignets in and then you've got a little blueberry um, sort of compot here um, we've sort of blitz up and then that's going to get piped inside uh, those beignets when they come out um, and then your posset again just lift the lid off with the posset again and now I really stress this all the time make sure it's out room temperature 15 or so minutes before you eat it. Uh, nothing is nice eating it fridge cold, um, apart from when it's in the summer and it's absolutely boiling hot and you want to cool down, but this is, uh, this is not that time. So give it a little bit of time um, just, to, um, just to warm up. Um, so what we're gonna do, uh, just rearrange your little um, pieces of lemon confit if, if needed, just in your dish. So you'll see we've put some blueberries on there, uh, lemon confit then it's got vanilla jelly and underneath it's got that real zesty uh, lemon posset so that's just going to go on the plate like so and then when your beignets are nearly ready just get your little um, uh, compote cut the end off the, the bag and that's all ready to go let's get the beignets out don't take long at all and then get a little skewer, something along those lines, and just hold into the beignet, like so. Get your, so if you've got a little bag or a little piping bag like here, put that in the center, and just pipe it in there. Not too much, otherwise it'll all squeeze out. So just sort of push the bag in, gently squeeze it in like a donut, and then into your sugar, and then give them a roll around. And what you'll find is that well coats really nicely with that blue rim and little sugar under there. So I'm just gonna roll them, give them a lovely little dust in there. Make sure you get them fully coated. Now I'm just gonna sit those just on the side. And it's just a nice little garnish to go with the posset. We posset's like, um, like quite creamy. And these have got a lovely, lovely little crunch 
remind you a bit of the old fairground when you go and get those little donuts and things just straight off the stool. So there you go, first dessert for you, lovely lemon posse. So next dessert is um, this one for the chocolate lovers. Um, we've got this lovely dark chocolate tort. Um, which comes in this little eco pot. Uh, you can either turn it out or uh, just just sort of cut down it carefully with some scissors, like so. And that will allow you just to bend that side down. And then you can get your spatula or little pallet knife Get in there like that underneath, and there we go. So let's get rid of that. So here you've got um, lovely little chocolate glaze on the top of it, some gold leaf just for good measure. So what we'll do is just arrange this like so on our a lovely little plate style bowl there. And then garnishes to come with. First one, you've got an orange gel. This is colour orange gel, so give that a good stir. You can slice it on the plate or you can just put some nice little spoons of that on there. So I'm just going to put one and I'm going to put another one. There we go. And then we've also sent some flour orange segments. And that's again really rich taut. So I want to put some segments just going around the top of my plate. So that's my blood orange. And then also blood orange confit. So again not wasting anything. We've taken some of that um, uh, some of that skin um, the peel from the blood oranges, confit it down very very slowly in sugar. So let's just add some of those nice pieces. And again you're making this look really nice and dainty. So, and then there's just one more thing to go on after this. There, there we go, that's enough confit. Then you've got this lovely chocolate fudge. So um, take your fudge, put it on as a large, large cube if you prefer. I'm just gonna cut my fudge into a, some smaller pieces, like so. There we go, let's turn that around. And again, keep the fudge in the, in, in the fruit until you're ready to go because it will melt fairly quickly. And I'm just gonna add some of my little cubes of fudge. And like so. And there we go, that is my dark chocolate tort with blood orange, edible gold, uh, and a lovely little uh, chocolate fudge. Last but no means least is our cheese course uh, for this week. Um, so often we do a cheese tasting plate where we've got select cheeses. Um, but this week it's a Isle of Wight blue cheese tart. So we've got the lovely Isle of Wight blue cheese uh, from Queen Baradera from Richard Hodgson. Um, and what we've done, made like almost like a quiche mixture. Uh, so we've got a short pastry um, case. That's gonna go in the oven for about six to eight minutes. There we go. And then to serve with it, we've got some red chicory leaves. Uh, we've got a real lovely bitterness to it, uh, which again, rich uh, sort of cheese filling. They can go lovely. And then a uh, pickled walnut dressing with some port in there, shaved walnut. So we'll be back in about six minutes uh, where we'll get the chicken leaves dressed with some of that vinaigrette and we'll plate the last dish up. So to finish your blue cheese tart off, so I've got my chicory in a bowl. Take some of that dressing, a little bit of seasoning as well and just make sure that's all nicely coated and nicely dressed. So that's ready to go. I've got my grater ready for my walnuts. Let's get our cheese tart out. So that's all nice and hot. So take a spatula. Let's get that onto our plate. And then the chicory. Let's arrange it some on the plate, some just leaning up against. Again, chicory is not everyone's cup of tea, but you find it 
really goes lovely with this um, this cheese course on here. So I think that's that's just about enough. Let's get one more nice piece on there. There we go. And then a couple of those pieces of, of pickled walnut. Like so. A little bit of dressing. And then that just leaves us to finish off with those walnuts. They look really beautiful when you grate them nice and fine. So I've got one of these microplanes. I'm just gonna grate it all over. Like so. There we go. Lovely blue cheese uh, walnuts and a little tart uh, with a red chicory salad. Hope you enjoy it.